Good morning. And welcome to St. Mark's today on this Labor Day weekend and this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. A uh, few announcements before we begin. One is please keep um, Paul Ingold in your prayers as he's had COVID um, all, all week. Um, and so, so he's not here this morning, so hopefully he's, he sees that I started on time, Paul. I talked to him this morning and told him, um, I said, don't worry when you get here in the morning and I'm not here. I said, because I'm using reverse psychology. I keep coming in earlier and earlier and earlier on Sunday mornings to get started, but then that just means I, I do other things. I said, so I'm gonna wait until like 9.15 to arrive and then not do anything but get ready for worship. <laughs> and so it worked today. So sometimes reverse psychology is, is, is a good thing. Um, Don Coaster, as many of you know, uh, died this week. And so his funeral is going to be Saturday, September 16th. So not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday, okay? Saturday, September 16th, uh, the funeral will begin at, at noon and, and with, um, you know, a, a, some moments. Uh, they're not gonna have an open casket here at the church. I, I, I have not seen uh, yet. They said that the, his, his obituary will be in the Post-Gazette for those of you who are able to access it, or, or he, um, through Slater Funeral Home, you can also see his, his obituary. And the family is asking that, in lieu of flowers, if, if you would like to make a donation, uh, there's a specific, I, I don't recall the name of it offhand, but there's a specific um, uh, charity for dementia uh, patients, and, and that's, what, that's what the family has requested. So, uh, so that will be, that will be um, in two Saturdays, two Saturdays from now. This week, we, there, we will begin uh, pub theology. I will we'll send out the, the article that we'll discuss um, later today or tomorrow morning. It will begin at 5.30 at the getaway, okay? Everyone is welcome and bring a friend. This is a great thing to bring a friend to. It's not quite as intimidating as, you know, inviting them to church. So um, uh, that will be sent out. We are only gonna have pub theology at least in the fall on the first Tuesdays of the month because it just so happens on the third Tuesday of every month this fall, I have other commitments, <laughs> various, various commitments um, that will prevent me from, from being able to, to lead that. And adult Bible study will be, not begin until September 19th. On September 19th, well, that's Christian Ed, Christian Ed will, uh, Christian, yeah, Christian Ed will begin the 17th. Um, adult Bible study will begin Tuesday the 19th, and we'll be looking at the, at St. Paul's letters to the Galatians and the Philippians, okay? The, the Christian Ed, uh, at, on Sundays, we'll, we'll, uh, Howie will, will be leading us through the Lord's Prayer, okay? Are there any other announcements? Any other announcements from the congregation? There will be a council meeting, not this Tuesday evening, but the following. Um, I believe that's the 12th, is that correct, David? Um, so, so, so uh, September 12th um, at seven o'clock will be uh, our first council meeting for, for the fall. If you did not receive a, a newsletter when you came in, um, please, uh, uh, Ray has them in the back, so please receive a newsletter and that will save, save some postage. 
regarding the newsletters, we, we wanted to do the first few um, uh, uh, via mail or, or, or you know, um, where you had a physical copy. However, if, if you are, were, would prefer to just receive the newsletter online, or at, sent to you via email, if you let Paul know, or me, um, we will do that. And, and obviously that, that saves the church a little money in terms of printing costs and, and mailing costs. But, and again, this, and this is also for those of you who are, who are watching, uh, online, if if, uh, if if personally, I, I'm one of those these people that I prefer the real thing. But but if you're good at, at being able to to, to read things online, um, then let Paul know, and we'll, we'll start a separate group simply for those who want to receive the uh, the newsletter on specifically online, and we will not. Uh, produce a copy or mail a copy to you, okay? Any other announcements, announcements? If not, <coughs> excuse me. If not, then uh, God sightings this week that anyone would like to share? Any God sightings? Okay, come on forward. Isn't it interesting, on holidays we get smaller. <laughs> I just was having a thought. I was, I was just having a thought. I was thinking about God and his love. And I was thinking, it was a long, long time before I truly believed how much God loved me. And I was wondering, I wonder if anybody else had that kind of problem. We say, yes, God loves me, we sing it. But do you know he's with you every minute of the day? And sometimes we're having bad days, and sometimes we're having good days. He's there through it with us all. In fact, God doesn't love us because we love him. God loves us because he loves us us individually permanently forever and something happens to you on the inside when you begin to really believe and you wake up in the morning and say god loves me huh. like it's a new thought every day god loves us and is with us and sometimes i need to be reminded of that and i thought maybe we all need to be reminded of how much god loves us and how much he loves us so much, I don't know that I would ever be able to do this. He gave us a son, and that son died for us, for you and for me. So, get up in the morning and say, God loves me, and really begin to put that in your heart, because that's a wonderful message to start the day. Thanks. Amen, amen, thank you, Jean. Um, Come on up, Susan, if you want to come up. Luther, Luther invites us to, to begin each morning by making the sign of the cross and remembering that we are baptized. And of course, in that baptism is, is the promise of God's love for us each and every day. So, um, God sighting, please. Um, I just wanted to refer to an article that's in the newsletter um, it's our featured volunteers, Lisa and Tom Greiner. Um, Lisa, come, Lisa and Tom come and volunteer at Meals on Wheels very faithfully, and we've really gotten to know them. Uh, Lisa has Parkinson's, and you would never know it, although at one point she was bedridden. And the story is in the newsletter, and then it refers you to a clip on YouTube. Please watch it and, and, and you know, Thank God that they're here at St. Mark's. I'm thoroughly convinced they were sent here, and what a blessing they are to this congregation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Susan, how are you, do, how are you doing on get, recruiting volunteers while, while you, you will be under the weather? Help. Recuperating. <laughs> Help. 
Um, we're, uh, plans coming together. The problem is I don't know exactly how long I'm going to be out. I know I'll be out at least those first two weeks. Um, I had my surgery on the 15th, and then I'll be out the two weeks. Um, Joni and I are kind of putting a plan together. We've got those first two weeks not in real bad shape, but after then, I just, I just don't know what to expect because I'm being told six weeks and that I'm not going to be able to lift anything. So I am going to need some help. So if you're able to come, if you can, uh, if you like to cook, or if you can even just come and sit and make sandwiches, that frees up Janice um, to help more in the kitchen. So she knows the routine and it would be easier. So even if you can come and make sandwiches, you can come a little later and do that. It's really not that hard. Everybody can make a sandwich, right? Okay. The other thing is Lady Lyons, um, because of Dawn Coaster's funeral, uh, I think we'll just hold off and start Lady Lyons in October. Um, we did change Lady Lyons to the third Saturday of the month rather than the first because that's the day we don't have food share. So third Saturday of the month, but none in September. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other God sightings or announcements to share this morning? If not, then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us be at prayer. One final announcement uh, before we begin, um, and that is last week was Suzanne's birthday. Now, she was not here on Sunday, so we could uh, uh, tell her happy birthday because her family took her out for dinner. But um, when you see Suzanne today, please wish her a, a, a belated happy birthday. And, and also, next Sunday will be God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. And, and so, uh, following the worship, there'll be um, a time for fellowship, uh, time to, do, to participate in doing some small projects that are needed here at, at St. Mark's. And, um, and, and some, some type of, some type of, of uh, of, 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 of sub, substance, I don't, I, uh, hasn't been decided yet. I don't know for sure if there's going to be a, going to be a, 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 a little buffet or if nothing else, there'll be, there'll be uh, what we call, what one of my previous congregations called Sunday Sundays, which is ice cream with all the, with, with whatever toppings you want. Um, and and so uh, so please please plan on that next next Sunday um, if you will, are able to be here. Please stand now as we begin our worship. Again, we welcome all those who are worshiping online, and we begin. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours, and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves. Holy God, 
holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships and for an unwillingness to see the image of God in others, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God and for carelessness with the fruits of creation, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For idleness and witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we hear God's holy word for us today. first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 58 verses 9 to 14 then you shall call and the Lord will answer you shall cry for help and he will say here I am if you remove remove the yoke from among you the pointing of the finger the speaking of evil if you offer food for, to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not giving your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day raised again, but Peter took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone 
for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our living God and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Religion, at its best, causes us to ask hard questions of ourselves. But at its worst, religion deludes us into thinking we have all the answers for everybody. Let me say that again. Religion at its best causes us to ask hard questions of ourselves. But at its worst, religion deludes us into thinking that we have all the answers for everybody. All religions in their own way talk about dying before we die. But too often we have chosen to kill the wrong things in almost all of history. It was the other, the heretic, the sinner, the foreigner that had to die. Seldom was it us. But Jesus tells his disciples today, it is they who must die. They must be willing to give their life. They must be willing to give their life in order to save it. They must be willing to set their minds on divine things, not human things. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, your word speaks to us today to convict our hearts, to help us to lead a life of faithful discipleship, a life where we are transformed, where our hearts and our minds are transformed by your grace through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We all look for something strong, undying, infinite, and life-giving. And religion tells us that is God. But then Jesus comes along, and Jesus says, No, even I must suffer. Even I must die. Jesus is saying that God is not separate from from the trials of humanity. God is not aloof. God is not some pie-in-the-sky vision somewhere. God is not a mere spectator. God does not merely tolerate and certainly does not cause human suffering. Rather, God participates in our humanness in all of it, in the good and the bad. What did Jesus do when his friend Lazarus died? He cried. What did God do in the midst of 9-11? God cried. In the midst of the Holocaust, at a concentration camp, Someone once yelled, where is God in the midst of this torture and death? And a rabbi who was also there in the concentration camp turned to him and said, God is with us and God is crying too. Today, Jesus tells his disciples for the first time in the Gospel of Matthew that he must suffer, die, and be buried. 
But Peter protests, no way, Lord, this must never happen to you. And how does, Je how does Jesus respond? He says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You, the rock, are a stumbling block for me because you have set your mind on human things, not divine things. It has been said that religion is filled with people who are afraid of hell, but faith is for people who have gone through hell. But in fact, if we truly believe in Jesus and the words of the Bible, then we must accept the fact that Jesus is on the side of and stands in solidarity with those who are oppressed and suffering. And he calls us to be transformed, to be changed by giving up our lives. Today, Jesus teaches his disciples a key point in living the godly life. Essentially, Jesus says, love yourselves less and others more. Deny yourself for the sake of others. A wealthy man, a wealthy man was nearing death. And he told his wife to go and empty all of his bank accounts and to sell all of his stocks because he wanted to be buried in a bed of cash surrounding him in the casket. Well, his wife was telling a friend about this. And her friend said, you didn't do it, did you? His wife said, oh, yes, I emptied all his accounts and I counted all of his money and I put it in his casket in the form of a check. So as soon as he cashes it, it's all his. <laughs> Setting our mind on divine things, not human things, requires us to expand our perspective of God and the world. And it requires us to admit that there are many things in this world that we cannot and do not understand. My ways are not your ways, God tells us. Well, people, Peter, Peter thought that he understood what it meant for Jesus to be the Messiah, but he didn't. And Jesus rebuked him for it. The scribes and the Pharisees thought they knew what it meant to follow the ways of God. Yet Jesus continually clashed with them for following the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. Churches get hung up on beliefs and doctrines and buildings and traditions in our feeble attempts to maintain them just the way they've always been. But Jesus doesn't call us to maintain the status quo. Jesus challenges us to be spiritually transformed and renewed. St. Paul writes, be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and live according to the will of God. And then we, human beings, righteously decide that we are, in fact, doing that. That we are, in fact, the ones who have been transformed and are not con being conformed to the world. But it's the non-Christian world that's not. It's the height of hypocrisy. And exactly why Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are not a rock, but a stumbling block. We blame others for not coming and keeping our churches full. But maybe we need to look at ourselves. 
to look at ourselves first, to take the logs out of our own eyes before we take the splinter out of the eyes of a neighbor. And perhaps we need to ask ourselves, how are we stumbling blocks to people today? You know, the number of people who claim to be spiritual but not religious should tell us something. People yearn to be spiritually connected to something greater than themselves. But somehow the church has become a stumbling block for them. Sisters and brothers, to confess Jesus means to walk the way of the cross in our daily life. It means to expand our perspective, transcend our own egos, look beyond the limited scope of human concerns, and have a more compassionate and empathetic outlook toward others, especially those who suffer. It means to recognize our shared humanity and our interconnectedness with God's whole creation. Dr. King once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. God's divine things and, and purposes involve the qualities of love, compassion, and having a servant's heart like Jesus had. It is beyond what we do, and instead it involves a spiritual transformation about how we look at the world and our neighbors. And that's what Jesus is trying to explain to Peter and the disciples. It's when we move beyond ourselves and cultivate inner, inner grace, mercy, and forgiveness. It's when we embrace transcendence that we can experience a deeper connection to God's divine love and tap into the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Stop being a stumbling block, Peter. Set your mind on divine things, on godly things, on loving things, on gracious things. Knowing that these things may be uncomfortable, difficult, and even involve suffering. And yet, ultimately, by setting our mind on divine things, our faith and our spirit is enriched, and so is the goodness of God's creation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, dear sisters and brothers. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen.
remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans may reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Especially, O oh Lord, we pray for all those places who, where they people continue to suffer from fires and from hurricanes. We pray for the peoples of western and northwestern Florida. We pray for the people of Maui and of western Canada. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Especially today, O oh Lord, we pray for the peoples of Haiti, Venezuela, Colombia, Eritrea, Myanmar, Sudan, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Yemen, Niger, Ukraine, Russia, and the United States. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray that wherever that emergency vehicle is going, that they, people might be tended to, and that they might be brought to your healing and wholeness and comforted by your love. And God of deliverance, we remember all who are suffering this day, all who are lonely, all who are in pain. And so we pray for healing. We pray today, O oh Lord, for healing for Paul, Jack, Susan, Carol, Alice, Holly, Judy, Sandy, Pam, and David. Liberate your people, those who are being persecuted or insulted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this labor day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor, especially for Don Coaster and his family. We give thanks for those who nourish us in our own lives of faith, for Patty, Louise, Nana, Liz, Sarah, Nelson, Cambria, Amelia, and for all family and friends. O oh Lord, we pray for your presence with Paul, Diana, Tom, Mark, Aaron, Adam, Madison, Sharon, Brandon, Jeff, Colleen, Claire, Dylan, Pat, Mark, the Coaster family, and for Bob. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us always according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. And now as we begin to, to, to um, sing together the offering song as the grains of wheat, I, 
I want, I just, I wanted to share. This is one of the oldest hymns of the church. That this is a hymn that the church has sung uh, from uh, at the, the beginning of its communion liturgy back until the time, all the way back to the time of the disciples as the grains of wheat. Let us pray together the operatory prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Be good and the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to redeem us all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome at the table of the Lord.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. People of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.